Okay. So, sorry for the interruptions. There, there were some uh, issues with, with respect to the internet. Okay. So, if you see this question, PSLV launch satellites use useful for Earth resource monitoring, whereas GSLV are designed mainly to launch communication satellites. So, let us say you do not know this statement. So, <clears throat> if you focus on the third statement, GSLV Mark III is a four-stage launch vehicle with the first and third stages using solid rocket motors and the second and fourth stages using liquid rocket engines. So, this is a wrong statement. Why? Because we know that GSLV, GSLV uses three stage and the upper stage is known as cryogenic upper stage. So, the last stage is upper, st uh, upper stage is the cryogenic phase. So, this if this is wrong, so does this help? So, it helps in eliminating this and uh, this. So, we are left with one only and one and two. So, we now know that one is a correct statement per se. So, let us see that satellites launched by PSLV appear to remain permanently fixed in the same position in the sky as viewed from a particular location on earth. So, when we say PSLV, it launches basically what? Polar uh, satellites which will be orbiting the polar orbits. So, if they are polar orbits, then they would not be appearing stationary. What appears stationary are satellites which are placed on geostationary orbits. So, in geostationary orbits are the most, uh, they have the highest altitude around 36,000 kilometer altitude and they are, they have to be orbiting the plane above the equator. So, but uh, these polar satellite launch vehicles, they send or satellites which orbit or move in north-south direction. So, this is not a correct statement. Second statement is not a correct statement. So, the correct statement in this case is one only. Okay. So, here you see that uh, they often play with some of the numbers which UPSC uses. So, let us move to the next question. Uh, now, this question involves some conceptual understanding. But uh, let us see how we can solve this question. So, this question says that with reference to Aditya L1 mission, Uh, with reference to Aditya L1, which of the following are the advantage of placing placing satellite in the halo orbit around the Lagrangian point L1? So, here you need to have some conceptual understanding of L1 point or Lagrangian point. So, what are these Lagrangian points? Uh, these are five points in our sun and earth, uh, you know, how they revolve around each other. So, there are five points in space between sun and earth uh, where the uh, generally the gravitational forces cancel out each other so that if you place a object or a satellite there so you would uh, need lesser fuel to put uh, put that particular satellite in that place itself okay so there are five such points so there are five such points so if uh, this is sun and this is earth so, there it is said that there are three points are on the line joining sun and earth. So, this is L1, this is L2 and this is L3, this is behind the sun and here. So, these are three Lagrangian points. So, Aditya is being placed here. The other points are L4 and L5 which are on the apex of a equilateral triangle formed by joining the base and the apex. So, this with sun and earth as the base, you get an apex apex uh, of a equilateral triangle. So, here you have basically L4 and L5. So, these are Lagrangian points. So, Aditya mission is being placed here. So, what is the advantage of being of placing Aditya mission here? That it will get an uninterrupted view of the sun and also uh, the fuel required would be less because it is a stable point. Okay, so L2 is a is also an important point, and here we have sent a recent mission or what we call as a James Webb telescope. So this will look deep into space. So we should uh, be taking note of some of these important Lagrangian points. So L1 we are sending Aditya, and at L2 we have sent James Webb telescope. So what this question says that uh, continuously view the sun without any eclipses yes this is a true statement 
okay does this help so you get to this uh, option so either this could be correct or this could be correct so the point is shielded from solar wind due to the magnetic field of the earth so the magnetic field of earth doesn't reach the l1 point okay so this is the conceptual understanding that magnetic field doesn't reach the l1 point so this statement is not a correct statement so you get the answer as a only okay moving on to the next question okay so uh, this question involves james webb okay so consider the following statement regarding space based telescopes so two famous space based telescope are uh, hubble and the recent one is james webb telescope so space based telescopes can analyze the electromagnetic radiation such as uv x rays and gamma rays while land based telescopes can mainly al analyze visible light in the electromagnetic spectrum and let us say you do not know this but uh, this is <clears throat> kind of uh, this is correct statement so james webb space telescope is an active optical telescope in space which can analyze all the forms of electromagnetic radiations so this is an incorrect statement why because james webb telescope it will be observing space in the infrared region so it will be observing is in the infrared region so the here answer would be one only moving on to the next question so we'll cover some questions related to nuclear or nuclear technology so uh, this question the term tokamak so tokamak is quite in news uh, recent news was uh, china's artificial sun the reactor there is known as east so the last part in east is tokamak so it is part of a global effort uh, where we are trying to produce a nuclear fusion so uh, there is a global effort which is known as iter Interna international thermonuclear energy okay we are trying to build a reactor so which can carry out fusion so nuclear fusion is an important technology which we haven't been able to achieve but uh, studies are going on and uh, researchers are trying to produce energy from nuclear fusion so in nuclear fusion the challenge yet remains that we need to create a plasma so what is this plasma this plasma is fourth state of matter where you superheat the gas where you superheat the gas and in this state only can atoms fuse so you need to create that plasma and maintain that plasma so the energy required to required for creation of plasma and maintenance of plasma is much more than the energy which is being produced in the fusion that is happening in that plasma so we need to produce more energy through through the fusion than the energy given in in order to create and maintain the plasma so this is the major challenge so that is why the tokamaks are often in use so tokamak is a russian word for donut so if you have to understand in indian context so the most near word would be a vada so it is like a, a circular tube like and uh, this tube is surrounded by strong super magnets so they try to control the plasma inside and in that plasma we are conducting solar, uh, fusion reaction okay so this is important for your exam okay let us move to the next question okay the function of heavy water in nuclear reactor is so uh, heavy water so you would have heard about water but what is this heavy water so when hydrogen has isotopes when we say isotopes it means uh, an element has two or more forms so hydrogen has three isotopes so uh, two isotopes it has it is known as deuterium and tritium so the heavy water is basically composed of deuterium so when we instead of simple hydrogen when we use deuterium that water is known as heavy water so there is a property of heavy water so it acts as a good coolant in nuclear reactors so let us see whether we can solve this question or not the function of heavy water in a nuclear reactor is to slow down the speed of neutrons yes this is the case increase the speed of neutrons we do not want this because we want to slow down the speed of neutrons in a fission reaction the challenge is that uh, when you hit a fissile material with a neutron it produces more neutrons which would be hitting more 
fissile material and this in turn leads to chain reaction we actually want to control the neutrons or absorb the neutrons so this is an incorrect statement cool down the reactor so the purpose of a heavy water is yes it is not to cool down the reactor but to extract heat from the core and to pass it to the steam generator so we'll extract heat from the core and we'll pass it to the steam generator where we'll convert the heat into steam and then that steam would be used to produce electricity so the main purpose is not to cool down the reactor stop the nuclear reaction so stopping a nuclear reaction cannot be done just by a, uh, this heavy water so you need control rods so you have control rods which are made up of cadmium hafnium or uh, boron so the, this is an incorrect statement so the first statement is the correct statement to slow down the speed of neutrons moving on to the next question okay uh, this is a simple question consider the following uranium 238 uranium 235 thorium 232 plutonium 239 and uranium 233 which of the given nuclear is found naturally in the earth's crust so if you study about fission reactors so you would come across that plutonium plutonium are produced in nuclear reactors so when neutrons hit uranium 238 uh, when neutrons hit uranium 238 they absorb those neutrons and they become plutonium so plutonium is not naturally found so plutonium are found only in reactors so you you need a reactor to produce a plutonium and uranium 233 is also not naturally found so if you study india's three stage nuclear program so what is the purpose there is that we will be converting thorium into uranium 233 so uranium 233 is also nat not naturally found what we naturally found is thorium 232 and we will hit it with a neutron to make it uranium 233 and then we will use in the reactors so these two are four and five are not found in natural are not found naturally so what would be the answer if you eliminate four and five so <clears throat> one two and three only so moving on to the next question so in defense tech so again uh, the purpose of this question is to show you how uh, they play with uh, numbers so if you see that agni 4 missile which of the following statement is are correct it is a surface to surface missile yes true let us come to this part it can deliver one ton nuclear warheads about 7500 kilometers away so agni 4 we know that agni 5 is intercontinental ballistic missile but not agni 4 agni when we say Agni-5 is intercontinental ballistic missile, its range should be more than 5,500 kilometers. So, if that is the criteria for being of ICBM and Agni-4 is definitely not an ICBM. So, its range must be less than 5,500. So, they have played with this number. This number, 7,500 kilometers. Okay. So, if you would have doubted this number, then you could have reached to this answer one only okay so this is how you should be skeptical but it is not necessary that all the time they would throw wrong numbers at you so you should be careful moving on to the next question so uh, some questions we'll take some few questions related to it uh, <clears throat> so in this question the context of digital technology consider the following statements first statement in augmented reality a simulated environment is created and the physical world is completely shut out physical world is completely sh shut out so if you have if you just focus on the word itself augmented reality so if uh, if you are trying to augment the reality it means the reality exists so you are just trying to add some things add some layers on that reality so you are not actually creating a new world so this is the catch here so in augmented reality you do not create a new physical world so this is a wrong statement so does this help if this is a wrong statement does this help so you have got two two options now three and four and four only so it means four is uh, per se is correct so we'll have to check for three so let us check three uh, ar allows individual to be present in the world and improve the experience using the camera of smartphone or pc so this seems to be 
correct statement. What is the fourth statement? VR closes the world and transposes an individual providing complete immersion experience. When we say virtual reality, so the, actually this word virtual reality is a misnomer. You actually take a person out of reality and you create a new world entirely which is the digital world or the online world. So this statement closes the world and transposes an individual completely immersion experience. Yes. So this is a correct statement. So here you reach to this answer. You need, you did not need this answer, uh, this statement for reaching to the answer. So this is how you should be using your knowledge and uh, elimination technique both. Okay. So let us see one or two more questions in this. Uh, this question VLC. So again, Okay, with uh, reference to visible light communication technology, which of the following statements are correct? So telecommunication is mostly based on radio frequency. So when we say about 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, they are all based on radio, radio frequency. So when we say visible light, uh, it means the light, uh, we use light as a medium to use it as a, a means to send data or information. So let us try to see this. So VLC uses electromagnetic spectrum wavelengths of 375 to 780 nanometers. So you might not be aware about this. So what is the wavelength? So let us say you do not know this. Now let us move to this. So VLC is known as a long range optical wireless communication. Can light be used for long range purposes? So light as we know that light cannot cross opaque objects. So light cannot cross boundaries, light cannot cross walls. Okay. So it cannot be used for long range optical wireless communication. So does this statement helps? If this second statement is wrong, so does this help? If second statement is wrong, so you basically reach to the answer, which is C and it says that one, three and four are correct. So let us see at 3, we'll just verify it. VLC can transmit large amounts of data faster than, than Bluetooth. Yes, this is the technology or this is the advantage of using light uh, as a medium of sending data. Why it faster? Because light itself is faster than radio frequency. So light is much more faster than radio frequency. So we'll have faster data transport also. VLC has no electromagnetic interference so this is also this is also true so moving on to the <clears throat> one more we'll take one more question and then we'll close okay uh, let us take this uh, this question digital signatures the, this is quite in news so all entrepreneurs and uh, uh, <clears throat> IT geeks, uh, you would have been aware of about this digital signature certificate. So what are these digital signature certificate? It is it an electronic record that identifies the certifying authority issuing, issuing it. So does it is the purpose of digital certificate to identify a person or an organization? So the purpose is not that. So <clears throat> this is an incorrect statement. So if you go by that, this is eliminated and this is eliminated so two and three is left so three uh, is uh, in both the options so let us see used to serve as a proof of identity of an individual to access information of server on the internet can it act as a proof of identity so it is it does not act as a proof of identity what it actually does is it is an electronic method of signing an electronic document and ensuring that the original content is unchanged it is just that you verify it you know in an online method so traditionally we used uh, signatures or we have been signing documents physically so here we are signing documents electronically and that is the whole purpose of this dsc so in this short video we have tried to see that uh, how our knowledge and uh, how the power of elimination both should be worked in tandem so as to reach to the right answer. So this is the strategy we should be developing for prelims and uh, hope to see you in the classes or in the QEP session.